In this lesson now, we want to look at creating and configuring virtual machines. So now that we've got some hard drives created, we can build our virtual machines. So first we'll look at the settings for VMs, and then we'll look at what are the components that make up a virtual machine. We'll look at virtual machine installation methods. There are many different ways that you can deploy uh, and create virtual machines. Exporting and importing virtual machines in Hyper-V, and then considerations for migrating legacy virtual machines. So the settings for virtual machines. When you go into the Hyper-V management console and you right click on a virtual machine, you have the option to choose settings. And then you'll see what you see pictured here. Uh, there's a number of different options. Most of them have to do with hardware settings, such as BIOS settings, memory, if you want to change from one gig to two gig of RAM allocated for the VM, or you want to change your processor settings. Now we'll look at these in a bit more detail in a demo in just a moment, but there are a lot of different settings related to hardware. The majority of hardware settings cannot be changed if the virtual machine is running, right? So if it's started up and it's running and you go and look at these settings, the majority of this stuff will be grayed out. Not all of it. For instance, you could change your CD, right? Which is basically just a way of popping in a different CD. Well, you can do that while a machine is running. Right, but you can't change the memory allocation or the CPU allocation or add another network card. You have to shut down the virtual machine in order to make some of these changes. Uh, there are a few other management um, settings in there that aren't related to hardware, and we'll look at those when we get into our demo. What are the components of a virtual machine? Um, well, first of all, you can see listed here some of the default configuration options. The name, when you create a virtual machine, you must give it a name. Um, and this is not the name of the actual computer that you end up installing, right? Remember, when you install an operating system, we refer to that as the guest operating system. So your virtual machine, which is the hardware spec, needs a name. Then when you install the operating system, you need to also give it a name. Typically, we might want to name it the same, but don't assume that the operating system is just going to automatically or magically get the same name as your virtual machine. So, a name. The default name is New Virtual Machine. Not very creative, but that would be the default name. You'll obviously want to name your virtual machine something descriptive that makes sense. Uh, location. The default location configured for the Hyper-V server. We talked about the location field before. When you configure Hyper-V, uh, the host settings, you can decide what the default folder location is for any new virtual machine that gets created. However, you don't have to take the, the default when you create the virtual machine. So you can save this VM to a different location if you wanted to. There's a default memory allocation of 512 megabytes of RAM. Probably going to change that. Default CPU is 1. You can pump that up to 4. Uh, the network connection, by default, is not going to be connected. You can choose then to say, OK, well, I choose to plug it into this network switch or to plug it into that network switch. Remember, when we create our virtual, uh, our virtual networks, we're essentially creating little network switches. Now, when we create our VM, we have to decide, well, which network switch am I plugging it into? If I plug it into one that's labeled as external, that'll get me connected out probably to my corporate network. If I plug into one labeled private, then it's just completely private to this particular host, and my network packets will never make it out to the rest of the world. Uh, virtual hard disk. So dynamically expanding hard disk is the default and the default storage capacity of 127 gigabytes, right? That's the default, and not only that, it's also bound to your IDE controller. Because remember, if I'm creating a new virtual machine and I intend to install an operating system, the boot drive must be on the IDE controller. Now, I can change the size of it here if I want to, or I can change it um, and decide to not create the disk right now, right? But the default is it will want to create a dynamically expanding disk. And then operating system. When you create a new virtual machine, it, it doesn't really give you the option to pick an operating system. It's more about, well, do I want to insert an operating system CD right now so that it can start to install from that CD? The default is no, nothing. So uh, we have many different options, and we want to look at what those options are, uh, but more specifically, how do we get in there and configure them and not, not just in a default manner. And after we've created a virtual machine, how do we get in there and make changes?